was talking about how it's a Super Bowl when you play everybody. Does that change that now even more? I was trying to get a hold of Jim Bayheim. I was so mad at him. Um, it's just an added thing. But I just watched Georgia, Vanderbilt. Georgia had Vanderbilt beat at Vanderbilt. I don't know if they need any added. They're at home against them. So they'll be sold out. Um, but, you know, I, I'll tell these guys, badge of honor, it's not a burden. It's badge of honor, let's go play. You always talk about you shouldn't come here if you're not, if you can't handle all this. seems like you recruit guys that you think can handle the moment and the bigness of it. I mean, so do you, do you feel like you have a group of guys that can shoulder You don't know until they're in there doing it. You know, but you're, you're hoping that we peg the kids that we think can deal with all this stuff. I, I'll even give you an example. Kyle Wilson, not afraid at all. Not if we pegged it right. He is not afraid at all. He's open. He's shooting it. He's not defensively. He's out there playing hard. He's not playing any any way in any way timid. Um, but again, and, and you know, we're playing down the stretch of close games. We're not playing poorly. I mean, it's giving ourselves a chance to win. But you know, the things that we're going to have to do to keep getting better. Even so, you said you're you're mad at Bayheim. Would you just rather not have it at this? Hey, this many games left. for two games, and, and now all of a sudden it's you. The only thing that's different because we're here, uh, it wasn't a big deal. Like last night, you know, or when they lost, I didn't feel anything. Like you no, know, you know, like okay, the media is going to converge. Look at you. You're here, whether we're, you know. So it's it's a different deal here, I think. But um, you know. We'll address it for a second or two, but it's, you know, we just got to play. Did they learn anything from the first experience at number one? I don't remember. It was a while ago. You know, we went and, uh, you know, someone beat us and we couldn't barely get out of the building. And that's <laughs> the weather. We're one or two or ten. I mean, that's what it is to play. Has there ever been anything where you recruited a guy, have you ever seen a talented guy and said there's something in that? This guy can't handle it here. He can't handle this for stuff. Well, normally they'll they'll let you know. They'll say, "What? Well, I'm not interested." Because you'll paint the picture. And I've had I've had kids that I've really wanted, and kids that I weren't sure of. But that kid convinced me that I can do this, and the other kid was shaky. Like even though I thought he was right, but they know. The kids know. And the kids, that, in most cases, they won't. They don't want to put themselves in a position of being exposed. They won't come. So it's usually they will. And every once in a while, I'll see a kid that's selfish, that's not a good teammate. But you have to be here because my question to all these recruits: Do you want to win a national title? Yes. Can you do it by yourself? No. So you got to be on a team with eight or nine other players like you, which means you can't take every shot. You're not scoring 30 a game. And it's not going to be all about you. Is that right? Well, I kind of want that. <laughs> you know, so that's where you kind of see You paint the picture, it. John, what you said. Just like I've said it, not, this is not for everybody. The toughest place to play basketball. You try to play Super Bowl, all that stuff. Stuff I've said, you know, I said it at Massachusetts that way, and I said it at Memphis that way, and I'm saying it here the same way. You said We're the same strike thing. fear in their hearts and then gauge Except their reaction. Except for Marcus Canby. Marcus Canby, when he was seven foot tall, when I recruited him, he said, uh, I said, what position do you want to play? And I always ask that. And he said, you're seven foot tall. I want to be a shooting guard. <laughs> well, you know, you've got to be honest with these kids and you've got to be truthful because that's where your relationship starts. And I really wanted this kid. Obviously, he was going to put us on another page. So I told him, okay, he could be a shooting guard. And then I told him, we do post up our shooting guards. I want you to know that. So. John, you were talking Saturday about people having a body on Anthony all the time. What's his counter move to that? He's got to play. I showed him the tape where before he catches the ball, he's got to be ready to play. Not after the ball is swung and the guy's into his body and now he tries to play. And he's got to play the defensively the same way. As the ball is moving, he's in position before that wing catches the ball. He saw on tape, as the ball was caught, 
he tried to move for position, he got sealed. So it's all playing before you catch it and before that ball gets to the wing defensively. Um, but he'll learn. I mean, let me just tell you, I mean, I've never seen him miss dunks or one-footers. This is the first game. And, and this action was okay. That's a good defensive move. And he got to learn. If they're not going to call it, then you've got to be able to negate it. And that's all it is. Terrence is safe. Terrence has missed 25 one-footers with his left hand. Well, you got to make those. I don't care if you got hit, whack, grab, punched. You got to make those. So we're learning. You said, you said several times since you've gotten here that there are those in the media or your detractors, whatever, that will say he just rolls the ball out, lets them play, you know, they run up and down, play offense. Do you, you guys that? say that? I don't say that. Have I said that? Yeah. I have said that. 50 yeah. times. I have said that. 50 times. <laughs> well, really, I just rolled the ball out. <laughs> Do you get a satisfaction when people start talking about how good your teams have historically been defensively as a coach? I guess. I mean, but, you know, what, what happens when we're all done with this? History will tell what kind of job you've done, uh, what kind of young men you've molded, how they turn out, uh, what you've done in the communities where you work, on the campuses where you work. Um, it, it all comes out. And so I'm not, if someone wants to say I'm the best, I'm saying, come on, pull out. If someone wants to say I'm the worst, I said, have at it. Maybe I am. We'll see. Um, if, I, if, if I'm worried about what everybody's saying, I can't clutter. I just have a sign on my wall upstairs that says, coach your team. And that's my job, coach your team. Coach the individual players, help them get better. Um, at the end of the day, I want this to be about those players. And if they keep saying, well, he just has better players than everybody, the connotation he can't coach, that's okay. Then I've done my job because they're saying my players are better. Then I've done what I, that makes, gives me satisfaction. So, again, this is about these young people. I don't, you're never going to hear me say, well, this guy can't do this or he can't do that. Or he's doing it. Yeah. Like, I'll challenge them physically to mentally be tougher and all those things. But I've always said, I got good players. And our job is to get them to play harder, get them to play together, and get them to talk to one another. You know, mental, mental, physical toughness is key to all that. Do you think being able to get these kids to park their ego at the gym door is sometimes underrated or underestimated? To get a mediocre group to play together and become a good team, there's a bunch of coaches. And, and I'm not saying this in regards to me, but to get the all-stars Phil Jackson would do, to play triangle offense and then defend together and communicate together and have breakfast club together. That's the challenge of what we do, not getting a mediocre group together and getting them to play well. And I'm coaching, and let me call it timeout so we take it on the side and I'll show you my side out of bounds. To me, that's not coaching. Coaching becomes how do you get the best and get that group to, to really come together, sacrifice for one another, be their brother's keeper, and, and compete. Now, the, the crazy thing in college, though, is it's not the best of seven. It's one and done. And, and stuff gets overridden here because you have some of the greatest coaches in our history not get to a Final Four because of where they coach. They didn't coach at a school that could get you to a Final Four. They've never been to a Final Four, and they were some of the greatest coaches. Gene Cady is one of them. John Chaney's another one. I've never been to a Final Four. What does that mean they can't coach? Oh, it's where they coached. John, why do you think Terrence is not finishing those one-footers like he did last year? Last question. Well, there were some times last year he didn't finish them either. So, I mean, he, but he'd be fine. He and I talked a little bit last night. And, you know, I had the team at the house last night, and we just, you know, watched a little tape over there. Um, I like my team. I, you know, we're going on a tough road trip. But I did tell them, the way this is going, we probably need a loss so that we'll come together and say we're not losing like this. In other words, get manhandled. That's enough. Because we're winning, we're getting manhandled and we're winning close games, so they think it's okay. So my thing is, let's take one on the chin. Then. Now what you're gonna do? You're gonna say it's okay? I don't think they'll say it's okay. So um, that was my message last night. Hey, if this doesn't start changing, we need to take an L. So you guys will come together as a group and say that's enough. Stop, we're not doing this anymore. Thank you.